Hello and welcome. And today we are talking about Ghanaians building Ghana. And we have pointed fingers at citizens, point at government, government pointing at citizens. And we have all have our own portion to blame as to why Ghana is what it is now. But then who calls the clarion call? Because of our divisive and spiteful nature of our politics. If I call it first, then he's not going to come. And certainly if he calls it first, I am not going to come. And there is no way that a nation is going to develop if only half the nation is building and the other half is pulling it down. We all need to come together to pull it together. But then who makes that call? And today there's been one significant, I think, a remedy which we are all boycotting or missed. And that's what we're going to discuss here today. Indeed, Ghana is a signatory to what I am talking about. Now, you want to find out, stay tuned. My name is Nana Asakwa, and this is PM Express. I introduce my guest when I come back. Well, thank you very much for staying. And uh, as I said, Ghanaians building Ghana. Now, have you ever heard Agenda 2063? And Africa we want, what we want to be like 50 years from now. And indeed, any serious plans, and you need to put 50 years in there to make it work. Have you ever heard it? Well, Ghana is a signatory, signatory to it, and it's a UN idea for the whole of Africa, AU idea for the whole of Africa as to where Africa needs to be 50 years from now. Now, thankfully and luckily, uh, one man who made an input and was there and present and championing this course is here with us to answer questions and educate us on where we need to be in 2063. And I'm here to talk to Reverend Dr. Kwabnao Punifrimpo, who is General Secretary at Christian Council. Reverend, thank you very much for coming. Uh, this hour is really God and country that brings you here. <laughs> I know. That is a good evening also to our cherished viewers. Yeah. Rev, we're here to talk about Agenda 2063, you know, the Africa we want, which is AU's uh, idea of all Africans should come on board and where we need to be in uh, 2063. They put down seven thematic points, which is, in my book, very fantastic now. You know, for every developing people, you need to achieve this thing. But, so for before we even move to 2063, you see, at the moment, the date is, we, we are in the year 2015. Re realistically, in Ghana, we, we, we are probably in probably 1994, if not a bit further back. So, I mean, how are we going to move to 2015 and then catch up to 2063? I mean, because that's how far back we are. I mean, as of today, we, we are not in 2015. Even though the calendar says so, our development, being human, infrastructure, health, education, we are so far back. How do we come to today and then move, uh, you know, and catch up the world in, in 50 years' time? Yeah. Uh, let me thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And... It's been said again and again that governance is a collective responsibility. Mm -hmm. That people should have in mind clearly what a destination is. Mm -hmm. If you want to be to play a role, we must know where we are going to. It's been said that if, if a person does not stand up for something, you fall for anything. Mm -hmm. Where we must start from, that we, we need a common ground, you know, mm -hmm. whatever developmental agenda we are pursuing must be owned by the people and before we get there somebody must rally us around a common agenda and that must be done till we have that uh, uh, level of acceptance that this is where we want to go but somebody uh, had facilitated the process of running us around a common need for us to own the process of of whatever destination we have designed for ourselves then we'll have a problem. Mm -hmm. But if we can have leadership that is bringing people together, pointing uh, uh, the future to all of us, getting us committed, you know, then our collective responsibility can be possible. So, my, you see, uh, you take uh, Burkina Faso, I think they have about 4.8% electric uh, connectivity. I think Ghana has got between 60 to 70% connectivity. Uh, Mali has about 16% electricity connectivity. Uh, but in 2015, you should have 100%. So, 
And you know, I, I, I take education. Uh, we have, I think, we're doing 57 percent now. Uh, education, ICT, we are doing probably 12 percent now. And all these things, we should have been doing 100. Mm. Now, in 2063, also say, how do we even get to this 100 so that we can look at what 2063 is bringing? I mean, how do we cover up the deficit? That is why I'm saying that it is a collective responsibility. Mm -hmm. Our part of the world, especially in this country, mm -hmm. the impression is that let us get a very good political party and we will get there. Mm -hmm. But I am saying it's a collective responsibility. Mm -hmm. As a nation, all of us must accept that if we will get to the dest destination we want, it's all of us and everybody, all the political parties, mm -hmm. traditional leaders, business owners, student leaders, uh, university professors, military officers, religious leaders, must all be able to see the analysis you are making, mm -hmm. you know. But somebody must bring us together. We should not stop dreaming. We must dream about the issues you are raising. Mm -hmm. But somebody must bring this nation together. This country must dream again, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we'll move together. If anything is missing uh, uh, in this country at, at the moment, our ability to dream together as a country is what is made. The partisanship oh. is too much. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do something about it, we will just be addressing the whims and caprices of people, you know, just mm -hmm. political parties, and they think they are doing well. I'm talking about all the political yeah. parties, yeah. but no political interest, a national interest. Until we serve the national interest, it will take us very uh, uh, long uh, to get what you are describing, but it is possible. Now, the, uh, I don't know whether to chastise us in the media or whatever it is, but. I mean, Agenda 2063 is a, is a very important document. Uh, but I don't hear mm. uh, any noise about it. Uh, even though Ghana is a signatory to it, I've, I've not heard people say, look, this is a new vision. Let's all come together and champion. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing. I don't know if it hasn't been implemented yet or if you're waiting for it to come. Uh, uh, the, the process is ongoing. But I think the question you are asking is, where are we in this process? <laughs> Because uh, uh, Africa Union celebrated 50th anniversary 2013, mm -hmm. and it was during the uh, uh, celebration that it was decided that okay, where do we want to be the next 50 years? So uh, the process was started uh, for the Agenda 2063, uh, meaning the Africa we want mm -hmm. the next 50 years, you know, and several units, uh, professional bodies and all that, have been invited in the different countries. Uh, uh, Christian Council of Ghana, we were invited to Kenya through all Africa uh, Conference of Churches mm -hmm. to make input, you know. And August uh, uh, 2014, the document was accepted. There was a copy of it. And we have been part of it. Why we as a country, we are not getting everybody on board? Because the idea behind Agenda 2016 is that now Africa Union has come out with this. All members of the Union go back to your countries and design your national uh, developmental agenda to fit AU 2063. Now maybe the big question is the question you raised earlier on that it seems as a country we have been very quiet. I cannot tell whether it's a problem from media, governance and government and, and what, but it is true that if you ask many people, you go to the street. In fact, it's not the same. In some Africa countries, uh, uh, they've started working. You go to their government uh, website and all that, and you realize that there are now structures built to get uh, the nations uh, on board in participating in the process. Mm -hmm. Maybe why we have been uh, a bit quiet so far, I believe those in government circles may be aware of Agenda 2063. But the idea is, can we get ordinary people to particip participate in this process? Mm -hmm. Why we have not reached there? But I think we we'll thank you for opening up uh, this discussion mm -hmm. on, on your program. The, the, the other thing is, and I said in my intro, that because we are so divided, it becomes very difficult as to who calls for a national unity. Because if you call, I'm not coming because, hey, I'm Muslim, you're Christian, or you're Christian, I'm Muslim, or MPP, or I'm NDC, therefore, I don't want to come together. So I, I was thinking that being that it's a good paper and it's coming from the AU, 
uh, we could all rally behind it without feeling guilty that, well, it was the NPP who called it or it was the NDC who called it. It could be a lifeline for having that united dream. In fact, this is what we, especially the Christian Council of Ghana, this is what we are, uh, we've been waiting for, you know, mm -hmm. and a more non-partisan approach because this country, in this country, people know what we want. Nobody should take Ghanaians for granted. Mm. Ghanaians know what we want. Now, if you hear, I uh, mean, we're listening to public discourse, you know, people are expressing their dreams and, and, and what, they, what they want, seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, it is up to, I believe here, the leaders of our country. If you ask me who should bring us together, it is the, the, the leaders of our country now. Must bring us together pull all the various thoughts express, you know, and work out from a document like this that no one political party can say that because of X, Y, Z, we will distance ourselves. This is Africa Union. And the issues in there, you know, respond to almost all the issues that you talk to any Ghanaian uh, we are expressing. You know, so somebody must rally this nation together for us to dream about the Ghana we want the next 50 years. Get all the political parties so that when we, we go through a process like that, we should be able to own uh, a, a dream that is Ghanaian dream, not political parties dream. This is where we are. I know that the constitution uh, 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 mandates president that uh, within uh, your first two years in office, you must present a developmental agenda. I wish as we go through the constitutional amendment, we work on, on that clause, you know, because if we don't take care, uh, uh, you, you ask me, either four years or eight years as I'm in office, I must present uh, um, a developmental agenda. I will come and sweep away whatever is there, introduce something new, and it's more uh, something that fits into uh, a political manifestos and political ideas. And quickly, the other political parties uh, I, I can, I can uh, I just convince myself there's no way, even if the document may be as, as super as anything, they don't commit themselves to it. <laughs> so let's move above partisanship, partisan dreams, uh, political uh, parties' uh, 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 dreams, and begin to think as a country. At the moment, if there's something we are not doing at all, we are not thinking and dreaming as a country. We are thinking and dreaming as political parties. Uh, this is a message that uh, Bishop Samuel Mensa sent me, uh, Full Gospel, uh, some time ago. And I'll read it again. It says, position leadership is totally different from functional leadership. Society gets the type of leaders they deserve. Our political leaders are a product of our institutions and society. Now, as long as we have sleeping society, we will continue to experience such rotten leadership in the country. And it's very true. And you see, I'm going back to your leadership. That where are we going to get this super leaders from? Since we, we, we tend to neglect the society and come back to it and say that somewhere among this, this neglected society, we must find our leader. You know, I don't think we're a sleeping nation. If you give attention to public discourse mm -hmm. in Ghana now, uh, this country is not sleeping. Mm -hmm. I believe the challenge has to do with coordinating, you know, somebody bringing us together, pulling the thoughts together for us to do one big dream. And this is not the first time. In Krumah's time, we dreamt as a nation. Even during the military uh, period, you know, uh, it became a common household concept. Mm -hmm. Operation Feed Yourself, yeah. uh, can I jump on time? Mm -hmm. Recently, uh, 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 the former president, Fry Leopold Rawlings, uh, uh, vision 2020 was a household, you know. And, and we must build on such foundations. I, I pray and hope that our current president will, will bring this country together to dream. And that his various political party uh, systems and structures will free him, you know, to, to build lead us build a country where all of us feel we belong. We should not build nations that political parties feel they belong or others feel they don't belong. But we are getting there. But we should not uh, 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 stay there. That is not the Ghana we want. 
also for the, the the system in which you take individuals through to become president by the time they become president can they go back and then be principled and say well so all of a sudden i'm principled because it, it, it's it's an enormous cost and they would have to borrow beg ask around and once you do that you automatically compromised and so once you attain the leadership, how then do you come back and say, now I'm principled? You have to respond to the same parties which haven't helped us. You see, now, if you accept leadership, at least you should go beyond the ordinary. If leadership is, is enslaved and restricted by the ordinary, if, if leaders do what the ordinary people know and want to do. And if leadership is not moving a step ahead of the ordinary, then we have a problem. So yes, political party and members and full soldiers and all that. But can we have a leader who also want to convince uh, the, the system, political system and all that, that friends, if we go this way, we will not get there. So let's challenge ourselves and get people to where? They must belong, even though they, they, they are not aware of or they are not willing to be there, but we'll get them there. Mm -hmm. You know, then we are solving problems. But if we restrict ourselves to what the ordinary followers want, that, hey, who am I? Then we don't have leaders. If leadership is restricted by the ordinary thought system and patterns, then we have a problem. We must, leaders must move a step ahead, go beyond the ordinary, and pull the others. So yes, political party members may still want to be in their comfort zone. A leader must pull us out of comfort zone. Immediately, they may not appreciate it, but give ourselves some time and they'll come and salute to you that we had a visionary leader. Also, for moving straight to this document, our aspirations for the Africa we want. And there are seven points which are all absolutely fantastic. Uh, number one is a prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. Mm. Nobody will fault that. Uh, we're saying that now leaders will sign contracts which are beneficial to you know Africa and sustain our development rather than uh, if the dollar goes up you're in trouble. If it comes down you're happy. If it goes down you have you know and I mean that must be African story. How long? You know, the contract our leaders are signing, and it's not only in this country, all over. Oh, wow. The kind of contract our leaders are signing. You know, sometimes you ask yourself, did we actually study this document? And where is our future in that document? Our children, you know, and all. So we need to pause. And I believe these issues Africa Union uh, uh, has to raise. Let's seriously discuss this in this country. Mm -hmm. Let somebody uh, uh, rally us around this uh, uh, Agenda 2063 of African Union for us to see if our aspirations uh, uh, can be found mm -hmm. in there. But we should not go to uh, uh, participate in this and come back as a nation and behave as if we are not aware. We throw them away and, and, and it's like we are reinventing the wheel. We can't lead our life mm -hmm. like that. Another thing which I find very deficient in our world is uh, sustainability. Uh, we, we have we developed a culture of living for here and now. Yes. And uh, I, I think it's dangerous because uh, even if you go back into history, we used to be a people who really preserved and lived for the future. But uh, if, if we can bring it back in our new Africa, I think it would help us all. Why shouldn't we? You see, you, 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 you went into history. But if you let's go into our culture, you know, Ghanaian culture, Akan culture, will always restrict the present. You know, the lands, the water bodies, other things are not only for the living, but the unborn. So you go to our villages and consciously they will reserve part of the forest and all that for the generation unborn. Now we sell land and if you want to send cemeteries. We don't have place for uh, our, our toilet facilities, market cemeteries, and all that. What kind of development is this? And now water bodies, you know, those who are signing the concession and all that. Now, no barriers. 
So you can go even to the middle of the river. And look at all the big rivers, Brim, Tano, and all that pra. You know, so you ask yourself, the next 50 years, are we going to import water? Or how are people going to survive on water bodies in this country? And somebody must see that future and respond to it. We must as a country. Also, yeah. but, uh, is, it, is it not basic? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to sound patronizing, but I mean, water, is it not basic that if you have it, you, you, you preserve it? Yeah, no, no, no. Hmm. They say if you don't know where your destination is, where you are going, any road it may lead you there. <laughs> so it may sound simple, oh, but this is basic. But it may not. It's basic because maybe years ago, some people saw the future and built something. That is why today, such a thing may be basic. If we don't see the future ahead of us, this may be an essential commodity. You know, we need to dream again. This country must dream again. The, the point two on this aspiration is uh, an integrated continent, politically united and based on the ideals of Pan-Africanism and the vision of Africa's renaissance. Now that alone, if we achieve, we are halfway there. We don't trust each other. We can't even travel amongst ourselves and uh, the African renaissance. Any time you talk about the African Renaissance, number one, you are antichrist, you are <laughs> backward, you don't know what time it is, and you know you, anybody who preaches, you know, Pan Africa, saying that look, Africa had a true story, you, you're not taking it serious. You see, Nana, you go to Europe now, and you can take a train from Germany, and you get to any other. European Union, France, and all that, you know. Now, in Africa, it's Francophone and Portuguese and English, and now crossing to the other is a problem, you see. And if we don't think about integrated Africa, then our markets are falling into the hands of Europeans. Why we think we are poor? People outside feel that, huh, that Africa, you are rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are people. I mean, why, why would people come and invest so much in Africa? They see wealth here. But we ourselves, now, now north-south patronage is easier than south-south. Mm -hmm. If you want to have access to markets, airlines, European airlines, you know, find it easier relating with African airlines than African airlines relating among themselves. So what people see from a distance, that this group of people, you are very rich, and we don't see it because we are, we are restricted in our side. You know, so how long? Now look at our young people, Ghanaian young people. Most of them don't see hope in this continent. For them, Hope is outside themselves. Everybody, and look at those who are walking on the desert just to get to Europe and what they are going through. And for how long should it take our leaders to allow our sons and daughters, our royals, to go through that? If we can pause and consider integrated Africa that will share resources to give hope to our young people. But at the moment, even though outsiders see wealth in Africa, we don't see it ourselves. We see hope outside ourselves. You see, for the last 50 years, we were never able to do I mean, even Ghana and Togo, Ghana and Ivory Coast. And I always say that even if secretly they conspired and you know, broke down these barriers or these doors, maybe we would have... But I'm wondering, can we do it in the next 50? I mean, we were not able to even touch it in the last 50. What is it that will make us go into, because we are not even educating the new ones on the need for Africa to unite. No, they've always been educated to be something else. I mean, and I said education is not just, you know, the ability to read and write. That's it. If you can read and write, for us, you're educated. So who then is going to say, look, Ghana and Togo, you don't need a border. Ghana and Ivory Coast, there's, there's no way you need a border. 
and Ghana and Burkina Faso, you don't need a border. Who, who, we are not educated that way. In fact, was one of the major concerns when we were in Nairobi on this document, that for how long? For how long do, do, we, do we do this to ourselves? And that is why, to me, when African Union uh, uh, started working on this, I expect that our various leaders will, will, will commit themselves to what the agenda they have set. You know, if it happens that we, we raise these issues and we go to bed, we raise these issues, and, and this must even, I expect, that, that this 50-year agenda we are talking about, even to shape curriculum in our schools, you know, we, we, something must change in this country. Yeah. We must give ourselves new orientation. Mm. And it's not just one weekend sanitation, one, you know, but can we factor the real uh, values, passion we have as a country, even to the curriculum we run in our schools, so that the next generation, the next 20 years, we know the kind, you see, you, you build the values you want in, a, in your young people, in mm. your children. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and we must start from somewhere building national values, national orientation, sense of patriotism, and all that in our schools, in our children, mm -hmm. in our young people, in our university people. So that now you have a generation that is coming out with new, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But we, if we, you see, it's been said that if you do the old things the old way and you expect new results, sorry to say, you are not wise. I'm going to take a break here. And uh, according to the January uh, issue of uh, New Africa magazine, page 13, uh, 30 billion came into Africa from other parts of the world. Uh, however, 180 billion went out of Africa to other parts of the world. So the question is, why do we say we are still poor? And that's the reason why Agenda 2063 is absolutely vital. When we come back, we are looking at a good Af uh, an Africa of good governance, democracy, respect for human rights, justice, and rule for law. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying. Uh, having a heart-to-heart -heart and a very important uh, subject with uh, Reverend Dr. Kwamna Opuni from Paul, General Secretary, Christian Council of Ghana. And we are discussing Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. And indeed, you can agree with me, this is not the Africa or the Ghana we want. And the whole idea is that uh, every country should plug their uh, agenda into this agenda so that we all synchronize and arrive at where we need to be. And I was just before the break, I was talking about an Africa of good governance, democracy, respect for human rights, justice, and the rule of law. Now, one thing that I'll start, even if I do the democracy, the one thing I'll start is with human rights. Mm. I always grew up, I don't know why I got it from that, as African, we were so social and therefore. I mean, you didn't even need to preach to us about human rights. I mean, it was a grandma was around. Every week, so, but then I grew up and I realized that I mean, we, we are really detached from our human rights. If you dare to be crippled, if you dare to be blind, if you dare to be deformed, you don't fit in our society. And I, I was a bit taken aback that that's who we are. And this morning there was a story uh, at uh, Bojiasi, uh, 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 an orphanage, and the, the way they treat the children is as if they committed a crime. Also, is that who we are, or is that who we, we have become? That that's how we are. I, I don't think I, I will vote for that. But mm. how we are becoming? Mm. Uh, that we are becoming self-centered, me, myself, my own, and I. Mm. Yes, we are becoming. And and it's being said that if you want to assess a strength of a society, mm -hmm. find out how the able are prepared to enable the disabled. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how you assess a country. You know, how the able are prepared to enable the disabled. What it means is we will always have the vulnerable in society, the weak. So those who are strong, are they willing, you know, to get the weaker? It could be in our rural communities. It could be uh, women issues. It could be uh, young people, employment, accommodation. It could be health, mm -hmm. you know. It could be anything. 
even religious minorities, it could be anything. Are we prepared, those who are able? Now, people get opportunity, and it's like, like I said earlier, me, my, my own, myself, and I, you know. So within seconds, what should have gone to 100 people have ended up being in the hands of 10 people. Mm. And we are still happy. You know, uh, here, let me even talk about uh, those of us in, in Faith Matters Church. Years ago, you know, traditional leaders were calling for uh, uh, missionaries, come and set up a church in my town. Leader chiefs were calling, uh, please come, missionaries come, I'll give you land. You know, because the thinking is, they will bring church and you yeah, have education school, school. and you have health facility. So they were competing. Traditional leaders, town A, town B, will be chasing missionaries. Bring me church. Come, come, I'll help you. Now, when traditional leaders call for pastors to uh, set up branches of their churches in their towns, what do they get? You're having churches that are happy, that can boast, we have X, Y, Z. They have social impact. Being there for the needy, the poor. Being there for the rural folk. The disabled, you realize gradually they are being uh, taken away from the agenda of Christian missionaries. So here even it's not only government and it's, it's even a faith-based institutions. We are also drifting. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a bigger issue, human rights issues. And, and I must say that uh, we, we, we must build the structures. The structures must be built. You know, the legal frameworks must be there. Because now our part of the, of the world, Ghana today, I mean, I, I, can, I can go wrong. All that I need to do is to move fast and pull some uh, political garments, uh, and I'll be free. So I can, I can do anything. I can, I can pull a cutlass. I can slap people. I can block the road. I can do whatever I, I want. The more I can connect myself, to some, you know, uh, big wigs in society, and if you know, do you know me, and do you know who I know, and I can call mm -hmm. this. You know, and when you have such system, then you break down law and order and discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, now, now our, our country, I think one of the institutions that, that, that sometimes uh, uh, they are this kind of disadvantage is the police system. Mm -hmm. I mean, institution, they do their work well. But you arrest somebody, and then uh, uh, somebody can just pick a, a phone call to say and so. And the next time is, oh, that person is my boy, Lefi. And, and the chiefs, uh, the chiefs, put on his cloth. Yes. yes. Oh, yes, yes. Here. yes. <laughs> you know, so now the law enforcing agencies are in disadvantage. Not that they don't know what to do. But if somebody will not allow the law to work, you know. So now if you, you know somebody, you can survive and still, you know, break the rules and still be fine. So one, one uh, fundamental part of uh, this point three, which is uh, good governance, comma, democracy. Who's democracy? You know, this idea that, you know, four years, whether you're doing well or not, go away. I mean, where we are now, who can indeed work within this four-year mandate? I don't know who's prescribing our democracy for us and indeed is that what we need to practice yes democracy but what's democracy no it's been said that african problems must be solved with african solutions mm. but we must also understand that the other nations uh, uh, that have gone very far you know some are practice the system of governance democracy whatever some more than 200 years mm. And, 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 and they had a patient to, to grow the process, to nurture the process. So that one, the patient, because we as a country, we are still evolving. Our democracy is still evolving. We've gone through military dictatorship and all that. So we must admit that uh, we have a long way. To me, the willingness, you know, the, the, the self-will that we want to get it to work is what should be very important to us that we must silence the guns in Africa and allow consensus building to dominate decision making and decision making process. You know, how long it will take us to build democracy, uh, our African democracy, uh, uh, let's have the patience. 
But now you find people who will hide behind democratic governance. But you realize they want to misbehave. They know how to win every election. And they know how to drive away their opponent. You know, I mean, recently, some of our West African countries, typical example, where our people will have to chase presidents out. Mm. Because we keep changing constitution just to suit. Uh, and, 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 and please, this country, how sometimes we rush to pass uh, uh, bills in parliament in this country under certificate of, of, of emergency and all that, uh, we must uh, take a second look at that. Our parliament must take a second look at this certificate of emergency. And it's like there's nothing you can do because our par uh, parliamentarians must educate the citizens before they vote. But also, did they, did they represent us? They are supposed to represent us. That's what the parliamentary system is all about. They represent us. But now it's like they represent their political parties mm -hmm. because they, they have the whips that are whipping them to vote on certain lines. But mm -hmm. elsewhere, parliamentarians will go and meet members in their constituencies. Then they come and vote per the interests of the people they represent. Mm -hmm. That is what is missing. Mm -hmm. Because if we do major, uh, you know, major bills get to parliament and the certificate of emergency you know you realize that they don't have time now, I, I say that because i was asking uh, farmers in my locality and i was actually surprised being that they're all subsistence farmers and they were all worried about gm foods yes. coming in the system so i was wondering that you know my mp how did he vote on gm i mean did he vote yes or did he vote because i don't i don't even know that is it and, and so many things you know, uh, 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 this town hall meeting now mm. is still becoming a political thing. Mm. You know, it's becoming something like the political, or especially the, the, the uh, party mm. in, in government will come and we have done this, we are doing well, and so so and so, and then we clap for them. But I think town hall meetings must be more than that. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. MPs must go down. Now, unfortunately, I know next year the atmosphere will change for us again. Close to election, then they come, vote for me, and they come with all kinds of gifts. We are suffering, we don't see our leaders. When it's election, they turn That's out enough. to be angels and, <laughs> and, and take power from us, dash us all kinds of things, you know. But politicians are supposed to do consensus building in mm -hmm. communities. That is missing in this country. We must awaken that. So, for another disappointing thing in Africa is. Uh uh, point four here, which is a peaceful and secure Africa. Uh, one country gets into trouble, and where all the 52 nations will sit, we either wait for France, wait for America, wait for Italy to bring one to bring a plane, one to bring troops. And you think for two billion people, if uh, 200 insurgents, you know, rise up in one country, none of us, you know, can rally ourselves together and come to the aid of this country to say, look, we are here to help you. Boko Haram is just at will. Indeed, it took witches and wizards of Nigeria to say enough is enough. Witches and wizards of Nigeria said they won't stand you know, for this anymore. And that government was too idle. I mean, uh, as for that, we, we, we should, we, we, it shouldn't even be on the list. It should be. This is the Africa we want. Now look at the recent Ebola outbreak. Hmm. How many people died? One nurse in Spain, and the whole European Union uh, 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 change. One in, in, in Germany, one in America, and, and hundreds and thousands have been buried. And it's no news. Recently, somebody pulled a gun, killed few people in, 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 in France, and heads of states, presidents and prime ministers quickly moved. Eh? Peaceful demonstrations. And you talk about Boko Haram, many people. And it's not just Africa, it's a Ghanaian issue. Now look at the number of people who are dying on our, on our roads. Road. Useless uh, kind of thing. What? People who should not die. And it's like, uh, we are just recording. Now they are becoming numbers. People who are dying on our roads are numbers. So somebody will raise a billboard. Last year, 12,000 people died. And then some of them, this year, it was better. 12,000, now it's 7,000. 
that the death of a single Ghanaian should limit us as a people. Now with this uh, uh, recent uh, uh, electricity problem, the number of fire outbreak, mm. and you hear little children, six months, have been burnt. And, and one death, please, our leaders, one death. Now look at how the Americans behave. You touch one American outside USA, and they are all coming against you. You need to kill how many Ghanaians before we become aware that, that the death of one Ghanaian limits all of us. The death of one Ghanaian reduce all of us. But now you must kill more of us. University students have been raped, have been attacked. And it's, oh, it's just 10 people. Oh, it is just 100 people. Now this electricity problem, what is this impact on blood bank in our hospitals? Are we discussing that? If the hospitals are also going through this uh, 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 doom sort of thing, are the blood in our blood bank, are they still safe? Are Ghanaians safe? Now look at children who are going to write BEC. Eh? And if they fail, they say they have failed. Society has failed these children. They have not failed. So our leaders must cherish issue about human dignity. You know, must be at the center of our thinking. Also, for this one, uh, you know, most people, first, the first people we blame will be the, will the clergy. And that's point five. An African with strong cultural identity, common heritage, values, and ethics. Because any time you talk about cultural identity, and I get it all the time, Nana, how can you be a Christian and be a chief? You know, so by all means, let go of the fact that you are a chief and then come and be a Christian. And, you know, it, it's, it's been one major problem. I mean, national events, we won't pour libation. There's not a single holiday that's indigenously Ghanaian. You know, and here we are today, you know, and on point five, this is in Africa with a strong cultural identity. Now, is this going to be a Western culture or is it going to be an African culture? It cannot be Western culture. No, I, I must admit, uh, some of the father, the, the missionaries, of course, they gave us what they had. Mm -hmm. So some of the challenges missionary enterprise uh, have uh, uh, given to our, our cultures. At the same time, our cultures have developed because of the churches. Mm. Now, our languages, various, Akanfante, Asantipchi, uh, and all that, have not been developed. They were developed. You know, people like Ratri and others, you know, outsiders. But they study the language and develop them into writing. Now we have Pi and Fanti and, and Chumuru and other versions. You know, I believe there's a way that missionaries and churches have made tremendous contribution to the culture. But we have a long way to go. You know, you, you disconnect from the culture and we lose our identity. So we must be proud of ourselves as a people. But, so that, that's, that's, been a, that's been one of our major, major headaches. I mean, uh, thanks for the English. I mean, if, if you make reference to, let's say, Paul in the Bible, then, well, that's a saint. If I made reference to maybe Kwame Nkrumah, that's an, an ancestor. So that cannot be right, you know. And any society that, ha that don't refer to his ancestors will lose their morals. You know, Nana, again, this African Union dream that we, we must... We must uh, 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 build strong cultural identity. Seriously, uh, I wish must be here. we have a more in-depth discussion mm -hmm. here. You see, you you have been teaching at the university, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. Now, we wanted to introduce Department of Religious Studies, and somebody said that we don't need it. We don't need to study these things here. This is a science and technology. And that was the time the thinking was, let's have science and technology, and we will be fine. But no nation had been developed just on the back of science and technology. It's not true. Now, we must understand ourselves as a people. But the, the social side of us, you know, now the physical sciences are dominating. The social sciences... Students who now, now, 
B E C E. Those who get one one one. If you have a child who has one 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 and he want to do sociology, who want to do things that will bring him to culture to respect the culture. Everybody will say one one one. Why are you doing that? Go and do science. Do civil engineering. If if you do, you have A A A. Uh, you must be science technology. But it's been said that you know. Uh, um, Education without moral and spiritual values, including cultural values, will always produce intelligent criminals. That's what we are having in this country. Education without moral, spiritual, cultural values will produce intelligent criminals. So give us science and technology. Reduce education in this country to science and technology, and you are producing intelligent criminals. The social science, cultural science, must find its way into academics. But that is what we are not ready for. Mm -hmm. you know, so it is not a simple issue like that. It's a very big mm -hmm. issue. If cultural identity means anything for us as a country, it must find its way into our educational system. You know, and culture is more than drumming and dancing. Mm -hmm. Culture is more than that. It's our self-understanding, who we are. What makes us different from all the others? So that leads me straight to point six, which is an African where development is people driven, <sighs> unleashing the potential of its women and youth. Also, uh, two Thursdays ago, I did on my show, that's my opinion that here in Ghana, anytime you hear development is KVIP, street lights. Uh, thankfully, now we have a flyover, storage attraction. We have the international runway. At the, you know, that to us is development. But the human capital to use those infrastructure, we simply neglect. Exactly. And, and study all the development theories. It's human beings that develop environment, society. It's not society, infrastructure, that develop the people. And that is impressive. You know, that give us roads, give us bridges, and we'll be fine. You know, years ago, my generation, you could attend school where? A village somewhere. And you still find yourself Premper College, Achimota. Now, if you are born in the villages and you stay there, yeah. some of the communities are mm. recording. Uh, uh, I, think, I think it's on this lap here, rather. Yeah. yeah, zero percent. Almost every year, BEC, zero percent, zero percent. Four years. Now, if you do that to a community, you go and you give them what? Roads. KVIP, like you said. Mm -hmm. And you call it development. We're not developing the people. Our development must be human centered. That's what the African Union is calling for. That we must be development oriented. But the problem is now, if I know I come into uh, administration, governance, four years, you see, we don't do long term thinking and planning. You just want to do something that the, the next election you can just go and catalog. You know, four years, I've given you this. I've given you that. I've, you see, I've done very well. Please vote for me, and I'll do more. We don't think about the people. How different have we become? You know, and we must go back to the drawing board. I agree with Africa Union that Africa development must be people-centered. We still need infrastructure, but the human beings must come before uh, what we are proud of as infrastructure development. So for, I wonder one day when AU would meet and know that Africa is a strong, united, and influential global player and partner. So I don't know why we haven't till this day realized that they need us more than we need them. Yes. And, and it's a fact. That. Any little thing, we must go to Europe. IMF and back. I mean, I saw a picture of Congo, you know, and they had queued up to go and get carbon biscuits. And a little research on Congo tells me they have $16 trillion worth of diamond deposits alone. Apart from what the River Congo can bring them and the Amazon forest, $16 trillion of uh, diamond deposits. And they were queuing up for carbon biscuits. You know, Africa must dream again. This continent must dream again. 
Because Africa has been in the center of world civilization before, Egypt. Mm. You know, this continent must dream. Ghana must dream. Now, the outside, outside world, you know, even though they see our strength, they feel that, oh, this group, we can manage them. Now, some of these countries are thinking about the next 100 years. We are even, African Union is think, talking about 50 years. Some of these countries, you know, the Asian tigers, some of them are even thinking the next 100 years, 200 years, how life should be like. And, and if we can do 100 years, we should be able to do 50 years. And ask ourselves, the next 50 years, should we still be going to IMF hmm? when we have energy problems? When we need to construct bridges, should we go to Brazil? The next 50 years, do we need web bank money before we can construct community schools? Should we still go and be begging before we can have basic equipment in our hospitals? Solar. How many electrical engineers have we produced? You know, so can we move closer to a future that at least we will reduce our dependency on other people for our survival. You know. So I always ask this question about a revolution in I know you've touched on it, but I would like you to end on it. A revolution in the way we educate the up and coming ones. Uh, because um, uh, Professor Nano Pukwajiman, I've quoted her so many times. It says that a uh, schooling system diseducates you. By the time you finish, you are diseducated. Is there any way we can change and reorient our children in school? I think this country, we know what we want. But translating ideas into action seems has been our problem. Not that we don't know what we want and what we need. You, you organize seminars and conferences on education, and I want to believe all those who present papers will tell you the educational system in this country must change. You know, who will have the courage to effect it, to me, has been the problem. We are, you see, if, if you are into education, the, the heart, the curriculum, must respond to your need, not somebody's need. I did A-level geography. I knew all the rivers in Canada. I didn't know the rivers and mountains in Ghana. Now, if you give me education, that the content is outside myself. You know, you give me a certificate. But that certificate tells me I don't belong here. Yeah. I belong elsewhere. We need education that responds to our needs. By now, our leaders must tax the researchers, the universities in this country, the next 10 years, solve this problem. Education that responds to the environment, to the needs. Now, our educational, the curriculum we are handling, are responding outside needs. And so you, 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 you graduate and you know you don't belong here. You awesome. belong outside. Thank you so much. Uh, even before the show started, I, said, so I hope that my producers will give us a part two. So maybe we can do an in-depth of the pointers, how we can achieve the pointers. But uh, <clears throat> I agree with all the seven points, but we need to find out how we'll achieve it. But one thing that Osofo said, which I really, really like, is we must dream again. One dream that we all dream together. And I think it's very important. And I hope, like he said, that the president will coin a dream that we shall all help him in dreaming that dream. So thank you very much. And uh, like I say, tomorrow we'll be back to do it all over again. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>